Guys, I know I said that I probably wouldn't be picking up this game, but like, <laughs> uh, I'm just having a little bit too much fun. And so here we are. Hi, welcome back to another Connor Fan video. Again, I don't know if this is going to be an ongoing thing. But that being said, my name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of mistakes that I've made. And so like, therefore, we can translate them into like lessons learned or like tips. And to be honest, I made a lot of these mistakes because I went in not really caring. But then like now I'm coming out. I'm like, wait, I actually kind of really like this game. And so I do want to share like these mistakes or these tips with you guys because like they are actually really helpful. Again, I still do not know how long I am going to be playing Connor Fan like honestly, I really like this game. It's a real breath of fresh air from Precon, but I think that's just because I've been playing Precon for like eight months now. And so like, it's just starting to get like a little bit samey. And if you guys do have any tips yourself, like drop them down in the comments because like we would really appreciate it as a community. There's not overly much material for this game yet. And so like, let's start getting some things going, you know? And so with that being said, my first mistake or my first tip actually is to come over to your menu settings. Uh, come over to the settings settings. So this guy over here and scroll down to the very bottom and promo video settings, turn that off. Essentially, this is like your konosuba. Every time you go into another loading screen, konosuba. When I go to the toilet, konosuba. When I eat a meat pie, konosuba. And when my cat takes a dump, konosuba. Anyway, you guys get the point. If that has been annoying you, turn that bad boy off right there. All right, and so the next thing for me is the battle animation. So like, you know, they are cool. Typically speaking, I usually have it on once a day and I think that's okay. Or you can have it off. Like that's just where it all is, right? And so that's enough in the settings. I don't want to stay in there too long. Don't call me like setting stand or anything. And let's go to my next mistake, which is probably one of the biggest mistakes uh, in the game, I would say. But I don't think it's going to set me back too bad. So um, it's actually this character right here. Like, yeah. Somehow I ended up with the Cabbage Darkness and I juiced her up like really hard. However, if you guys have seen any of these tier lists, you realize that Darkness is like, well, the D tier for Darkness, right? Darkness is useless. And it is actually really, really freaking true. And um, guys, so if you are tempted to invest into Darkness, don't do it. However, from like a team perspective, from a team building or like the subs perspective, if you guys are still team building, like my first tip for this one would be to match elements for like the, um, what is it called? The traits, I think it's called. So if I click into a character, you'll see that they have a trait over here, right? So like Megumin's trait is plus 7% attack when using fire attacks. And so what happens is that if I stack my Megumin with other Megumin, okay, well, I, this could be another Megumin or any other characters with like the fire trait. So for example, like this bad boy over here, not only does my Megumin get like 30% of total stats, she also gets like these traits from each of these characters. And so guys, to prove that to you, what I can do is hit this switch over here and you can see that she has the these three traits over here. These three traits are given to her from like the other characters. So this one is her own one. And then on top of that, we've got the two from the characters. And then there are actually two more traits to be filled from the weapon skills. And so that's probably like one of the biggest tips. Like you do want to be actually juicing up the characters for those substats. Not only that, but for also the EX traits. And so yeah, that's it for that one. And so like, as you can see, some of mine don't match. And like, I've got this dark one over here and she's giving like freaking stun resist or something. It's freaking weird. Yeah, bind resistance, like darkness, is, uh, darkness is actually absolutely useless. Actually, it explains why down here, darkness has exceptionally low attack accuracy. Like if you guys actually like put darkness into a stage, you'll see exactly what that means. And I did hear that she might come into meta at some point later on, but like at this point, this is a wasted investment. All right, so moving on from that, the next thing I wanna talk about is the uh, battle arena. So that's this boy over here. And so like, I guess my biggest regret is that I did not wait until the end of each day before I actually attempted these guys because especially as like the normal launch players, a lot of us are actually going to get incredibly stronger like throughout the day. And so I will talk about that right after this, but like, let me reiterate, you want to do the battle arena as late as possible. Okay. And so like, how are we going to get that massive exponential growth? And like, well, I think like Nexon had a plan and that plan was to help your launch players catch up to the soft launch players to an extent. We're not going to get all the way there, but we're going to get like pretty far in. And how exactly they've done that is if I come into menu and if I go into inventory, Inventory, you're going to see a whole bunch of these bad boys here. I don't know about you guys, but these have been like, oh my God, there's so much stamina. This bad boy essentially equals 6,000 stamina. And I am so out of skip tickets that like, I don't even know what to do. And so what you should be doing from like now until the, let's say the end of the event or like whenever you can is grind out all of this stamina, pump it into like your EXPs, pump it into like the normal and hard modes. And then hopefully you'll be farming for promotions, farming for gears and for, uh, just farming. You'll be farming a lot of things. And so, so yeah, the tip here is don't hold on to these things because on day one, I was like, oh yeah, I'll hold on to them. But that is not the intent because like then you're going to be losing out on things like battle arena. And so yeah, that's a pretty big tip. Like don't let them sit there. Okay. Next tip has to do with
with like where exactly you should put your stamina. So I'm talking main quest and I'm talking like uh, hard mode, these guys over here. So seeing as we have so much excess stamina, what you guys should be doing is actually dumping it into all of these hard stages. And the reason that you should be doing that is because all of them have so many of these four star mats. As you can see right here, this worm fang, this like rainbow star mat is from 1-1. One, one. And if I keep going through, it's going to be like every single stage is dropping at least two of these rainbow mats. But not even just that, they are also dropping these gold mats, which are like just as, okay, not just as valuable, but they're super, super valuable. Like for instance, this fire staff that like you're going to put onto your mega min, this can only be found from like here, 1-3 or like 7-5 or something. But like typically speaking, you're going to be wanting to clear almost every single one of these hard stages as these are going to be like locked behind daily attempts, like three per day. And so I didn't do this for like the first two days and that kind of sucks. However, it's like only two days of hard mode progress like gone. So yeah, hopefully like this will help you guys a lot, like a dark dagger. I need this. I freaking need this, boys. All right, next one, I want to talk about this guy over here. So events. So this is actually a pretty big one. And the reason it's pretty big is it's pretty much a whole bunch of free stuff that you're not going to get if you don't click them over here. And so if you just do your daily missions, you're going to get all of these rewards, which is pretty hefty. Like this bad boy over here is already 300 stamina on its own. And then you're also getting like 100 of the login. Um, sorry, 100 of the jewels for just logging in. Five of those big potions, 20k money. Oh my God, skip tickets. I need skip tickets so bad, man. Man. But yeah, every day when you're finishing like your dailies, you also should be coming into here and claiming all of these things. Because again, this is part of like the launch event. This only runs up to the 31st. And speaking of this, also come down here and collect this daily bonus when you have finished all of your daily missions. So in a nutshell, if you are not collecting this, you are missing out on at least half a roll a day, 100 plus 50 of these jemmies. But not only that, you are missing out on a lot of progress. Like that's 300 stamina. That's like a lot of HP. I mean, sorry, EXP pots. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm trying to kit out like like all of my teams and I am running low on EXP pods. I'm running low on money as well. You know what? Honestly, I'm really freaking starved of everything. But yeah, that's that one. I think that's actually it. This one doesn't do anything. I'm pretty sure this just like arrives in your mailbox. And actually looking at this guy over here, let's talk about that. So that's 500 of the arena tokens. So let's go into the battle arena and I want to show you guys what like kind of the priority is. So uh, exchange over here. And so as you can see, we have a whole bunch of these like four star weapons, but like we also have these three star weapons down here. And so if you guys did do like the proper reroll, the Melissa or the Iris or whatever, you are probably going to be wanting this assassin dagger. And so what happens here is that this scroll for the assassin dagger turns into a fantastic weapon. So if I actually go into the go to crafting menu, I'll be able to show you guys. So here, and you can see that you only need one of these recipes to be able to make an assassin dagger. Now, why this dagger is so lit is because like, not only is it giving you physical attack boost, but you can see this bad boy down here, five agility. The other daggers of like the same grade actually don't get you these stats. And so like, yeah, I think I would definitely take that. On top of that, you can buy that directly instead of like, say having to sink all of the stamina to farm out these like uh, parchments over here or the scrolls. However, the other materials are the same. The iron Iron ore and like these like leopard oh sorry they're not leopard claws they're dragon claws I just disrespected a dragon I'm gonna get my ass kicked but anyway like you guys see the point here right generally speaking what you're gonna try to do is farm for these two and then hopefully farm for just this one well actually you don't need to farm for it because we got it technically for free and if you guys didn't get Melissa or you guys don't want to make the dagger for Melissa you guys can definitely do it for your favorite characters but the bottom line is that this assassin dagger is actually super super lit all right moving on from this one the next thing I want to talk about is the uh events this one over here okay okay so for like most of you people who just started with me i think the boss battles are going to be really freaking hard and so as you can see i am up to ultimate one and it is at 16k recommended power however what is going to happen is that there's going to be an ultimate two and then there's going to be an extreme one and then extreme two now the tough thing about this and especially like because we are the launch players it is going to be very very hard to actually get up to the ex2 stage and to be honest i've been hearing that a lot of soft launch players have been having trouble with like the ex2 as well. Like if we don't have a fully invested, oh, I can't click on, oh, but can I click on those? Anyway, if we don't have like a fully invested fire team, it's actually quite hard to beat this boss on EX2. And so what I would recommend is to actually save the majority of these tickets until the end of the event where you are as strong as you can be and then dump all of the tickets at the end because generally speaking, that is probably where the highest efficiency in terms of like the tickets to the drops ratio is going to be. And so if I come over here into the missions, there should be an event mission, which is like a everyday kind 
kind of thing special um this guy over here defeat the raid event boss five times and so like what i'm trying to say is that potentially if you guys are doing like the lower ones like for me the advanced one or whatever we are getting like a less efficient conversion ratio from like the boss tickets to these guys over here these medals but if you guys do think that these five medals per day actually makes up for like that lack of efficiency then by all means go for it my dudes but like i just presented you with another option right all right the next one i want to talk about is the job system over here and so essentially like this is kind of pretty much just like free stuff right and so in a nutshell the job system is pretty much like you put in three characters and they just get you stuff for free that's and then they also get affinity so that's actually what i want to talk about right now this affinity is actually quite important because you do get stats from it and so what i would recommend is probably putting in characters that you're actually using first and then hopefully you can get their affinity as high as possible until like the diminishing returns are way too large or you've actually managed to max them out and then remember to swap them out because this is free affinity guys but yeah as for the job system that's it kind of like i think this is a pretty straightforward system okay so now it's time to talk about jemmies or like where should we put our jemmies should we refresh or should we spend it should we dump it into these summer banners as always my opinion is always waifu over meta because i am a strong believer of if you don't get your waifu you're probably enjoying the game a little bit less and therefore like well why are you playing the game if you're not enjoying the game if you guys can stand like being separated from your waifus then like that's okay if you guys are willing to do that to chase meta but that's kind of like the point i'm getting at and so like if you guys aren't like fully into rin or like fully into melissa then i would say save all of your jemmies right now and the reason i say save all your jemmies is because the upcoming banners so it is 8th of it is august this month generally speaking especially like with this summer banner over here i think nexon is trying to take the approach of like lining up the banners with their seasonal times and what i mean by that is that like it is technically still summer for this one and so like that's why we've got the summer units here and then in october is going to come the halloween events and those halloween events are probably what we're going to want to roll on halloween is only like a month and a half maybe two months away and so it's not that much of a wait however again if you guys do see waifus like this is probably the most casual game in the freaking world and so you don't have to chase meta you can go chase waifus okay like that is honestly that's a massive mistake and a massive tip i know so many people who chase meta and then but they're like oh man i didn't get my waifu so now i'm freaking sad and honestly that's pretty much like a tip in itself all right boys the next thing i want to talk about is this guy over here the legendary freaking chalice and to be honest this is not a mistake and this is not really a tip this is just me ranting about the freaking chalice this bad boy right here is like oh my god it is the bane of my existence its drop rate is probably like negative 10 percent because like oh i just can't get enough of these guys okay so essentially whenever you are promoting any character from four to five you need like 10 of these for like your four stars or like three of these for your three stars and these guys are like technically a common drop they drop from like every single one of these uh what are these called the free quest stages uh not the relic yeah it's the free free quest that's it free quest so if i click into any of them like it is going to drop hopefully but like oh my god this is just such a pain in the ass to actually farm generally speaking you're going to want to dump these onto like your strongest units so try not to use them onto like your sub units until your main units have actually gotten the upgrade to like the promotion five and so i guess there was a tip after all you don't want to use these guys on your sub units until your main units are juiced but yeah oh my god like sometimes the equipment farming in this game like really gets to my head like these guys they are just so like they've never dropped man but yeah it's good like this game it's it's still good it's still really freaking ca game is currently experiencing reduced performance okay yeah it looks like this game might be getting a little bit popular all right boys and we are back in and so the last thing i want to say is don't sleep on your sub characters so in the party here like i was saying like you want to match up those elements or like those traits to like benefit your main character however you can see that i have a whole bunch of like two stars and one stars and stuff like that over here and i know there is a massive reluctance to actually juice up these characters like these two and one stars but if we look at the flip side of it if we don't we are going to be missing out on 30% stats from each of these characters. And so whilst they are not like the greatest things in the world, like it's actually going to be quite hard to clear content without these subs like actually juiced up. The weapons, you can kind of wait until you get the better ones like the assassin dagger or if you're able to craft like the second tier ones. However, the subs, like you really got to kind of get going. Like for example, this one, I was actually hesitant to uh, juice this Megumin up. But realistically, I'm getting 30% of all of these stats and that is honestly really freaking 
freaking massive. But yeah, I think that's kind of it for like the tips or like the mistakes that I can think about right now. Again, guys, I'm having a lot of fun in this game. However, it has turned into like incessant grinding, like just like brainless grinding, especially because of those freaking pieces of meat, like those 60 meats in my storage. Like, I don't know how long it's going to actually take for me to like get through all of this. But yeah, guys, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you kind of enjoyed the content. And so I'm going to start wrapping up the video here. Lads, I've got a secret message for you guys, and that's meat because we're given all this meat and we better eat it before it actually goes bad. And so, sorry guys, it doesn't actually expire. But yeah, if you guys could drop the secret message meat down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, please consider a like, a sub, a comment, a follow. You guys already know what to do. Come join the Discord. It's in the description. And if you would like to support the channel, like there are some ways also in the description. We've got a membership thing. But otherwise, as a piece of meat once said to me, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.